I hope everyone is safe and healthy and recovering from the inclement weather we faced this week. We endured two days without consistent power, which is much better than what other people are going through. There is a lot of finger pointing and false information out there, so I'm going to try to straighten things out in this video. On Sunday the 14th of February, we had steady snowfall the entire day and temperatures dropped to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Even as we braced for record low temperatures, downtown Dallas was lit up in pink and red lights for Valentine's Day. At 1 a.m. on Monday morning, the entire state began rolling blackouts because the demand for energy was greater than the supply. Texas lost about 30% of its power generating capacity, which left over 4.5 million people in the dark. The rolling blackouts turned into complete blackouts for some. Many have had no power for three days. Others have had one hour on, one hour off. Some have had no interruptions at all. We had inconsistent power, two hours on, six hours off, etc. Temperatures inside our home dropped to 48 degrees Fahrenheit at one point. None of the roads were cleared of snow. Even if you managed to get to a hotel or a motel that had power, they were completely booked. Our pool froze over and I'm expecting the worst when the pipes thaw out. Many offices, schools and homes were flooded because of burst water pipes, which has lowered water pressure for entire cities. Natural gas leaks have caused fires, but the low water pressure affects the ability to put out the fires quickly. We are also entering a freeze-thaw cycle, where temperatures fluctuate around freezing, which is causing more issues. There are still many people without electricity, gas and running water. Predictably, politicians and the media jumped at the opportunity to politicize this event, spread false information and fear, and pander to their base for their own political and financial gain. The right blamed windmills or Obama's monuments and claimed that the Green New Deal had infiltrated this red state. They mocked global warming and claimed that this event was just a taste of things to come because of the liberals. The left was quick to pull up old tweets by Texas senators mocking California's energy crisis. They blamed the deregulation of the energy grid and climate change. Everyday citizens were caught in the middle, people who could not care less about these lies and the political BS, people who just want to live productive lives and see the state and this country thrive. Let's go through some of the issues raised and see what we can do to try to prevent this from happening again. Natural gas is 51% of the total energy production in Texas. Suppliers claimed that natural gas was frozen in the pipeline, frozen at the rig and frozen at the transmission line. The pipes were not winterized because it was too expensive and the last time that Texas faced such extreme weather was 100 years ago. Other states like North Dakota invest in equipment to prevent freeze-offs, but Texas hasn't seen that need. Windmills account for 24% of the total energy production. These were also not winterized and were frozen. Wind turbines work in much colder conditions in Canada and Sweden because they have inbuilt heaters in the blades, the gearbox, the yaw and the pitch motors, and in the battery too. Blades have thin layers of heated carbon fiber and water-resistant coatings to prevent them from icing over. This allows them to function in minus 22 degree Fahrenheit weather instead of failing in the 10 degree Fahrenheit weather that we had in Texas. A viral photo circulated social media showing a helicopter de-icing a wind turbine to prove that wind energy is not clean energy. This photo was taken in Sweden in 2014 and not in Texas. Coal accounts for 14% of the total energy production. Several coal power plants also went offline because they either lost electricity or their parts were frozen. Nuclear power is 5% of the total production. Texas has two operating nuclear power plants, one in Bay City and another in Glen Rose. One of the two reactors in Bay City was shut down because of freezing water. Solar panels, which account for 4% of the total production, were covered in snow and ice and besides the cloudy skies reduced production. Hydro and biomass account for 2% of the total production. I couldn't find any news about those power plants, but I assume frozen rivers affected them. A week ago, no one had really even heard about ERCOT, 
but now it's one of the most hated organizations in Texas. The US has three main electric power grids, the Eastern Interconnection, Western Interconnection, and Texas Interconnection. ERCOT, or Electric Reliability Council of Texas, manages electric flows and payments for 85% of the state. They implemented the much-hated rolling blackouts to prevent a more prolonged blackout for the entire state. Many are blaming the deregulation of the electric grid for this mess. Texas has been getting a lot of criticism from people in northern states. Four inches of snow knocked out the entire state in one day, when other people deal with much worse conditions for months and still manage to supply their residents with power. I went to school in Cincinnati, where we got several feet of snow, but the city and its residents were prepared. This was a freak, unexpected storm. People typically don't even own generators here because there hasn't been a need to own one. Homes are also built differently. Most don't have insulated roofs, just bats in the attic. Uninsulated copper and PEX pipes froze in that unconditioned space. Some of my family members spent hours warming them up with a hairdryer just to get running water. Almost all homes here have a water heater out in the uninsulated garage, so the pipes going to and from these heaters froze. Since we live in an older home, our water heater is inside the house, so our pipes were insulated and protected. Many homes here are built with 8 inch thick sheathing, cheap insulation, thin brick or thin vinyl siding. Temperatures in our old 1950s home dropped 10 degrees in 3 hours. We don't even have a fireplace in our home. We can only rely on our gas and electric powered furnace for heat. Many other people have natural gas furnaces that didn't work when their supply was cut. Apartment complexes don't even have fireplaces either. Homeowners and tenants are not to blame for this. It's a flaw in the design and construction of buildings. Texas is home to six of the fastest growing cities in the states. This massive influx of residents has led to the construction of hundreds of thousands of cheaply built homes and sprawling, energy-guzzling suburbs. Homes here are typically a little larger than in other states and consequently consume more energy. All these factors are straining the crumbling, aging infrastructure. I live in an older neighborhood that has overhead power lines supported by leaning electric poles. These are more prone to power cuts than underground power lines. I can find so many other reasons, but I'm going to end it on this one. We, the consumers, don't value the bones of a home as much as we value the stuff that goes in it. Every home listing boasts about new granite or quartz countertops, fresh paint and hardwood flooring. New insulation, wrapped pipes and ducts and conditioned attics are not sexy topics, but they are extremely important. People don't rip out all the drywall and replace all the insulation in walls and in attics when they flip homes. I'm guilty of this behavior too. When we bought this home two years ago, we made superficial changes to it because any changes to the insulation don't have the same ROI as granite countertops do. That is a change that we, the consumers, have to initiate. We have to value and demand better built homes. So, in conclusion, the power plants do not prepare for this storm. Not the natural gas power plants and not the wind power plants. Residents weren't prepared either. It's very easy to point fingers and say that in hindsight, certain things should have, would have, could have been done. All we can do now is prepare for the next extreme natural event. Hey guys, um, the situation is worse than I thought it was when I recorded this video. The disruptions to the supply chain, loss of food because of blackouts and cuts to water supplies have left many people hungry. They need our help. All proceeds from this fundraiser will go to the Feeding Texas nonprofit. A big thank you to everyone who has been working non-stop for days to restore power. Dealing with 4 million cold and angry people can't have been easy and I'm very grateful for all that you've done. If you were affected by the storm too, I really hope that you're doing okay and that your power has been restored. Thank you once again for your donations and for spreading the word. See ya.